Let's talk about the most recent guidelines on Achilles tendinopathy. Hi and welcome back to PhysioTutors. The Vos et al. published the Dutch Multidisciplinary Guidelines on Achilles Tendinopathy this summer. The guideline is built up in six modules. I will go over the recommendations per module. The first module talks about risk factors and prevention. Consider informing an individual with a history that is planning on getting more active that he or she should build up gradually, taking into account frequency, type, size and intensity. Recommend targeted calf training before the season and wearing warm clothes during the training in winter. At last, discourage the use of fluoroquinolone antibiotics if alternatives are available. In terms of primary prevention, we don't know enough to make any recommendations. Module 2, the diagnosis. Diagnosing mid-portion tendinopathies can be based on the following criteria. Symptoms, 2 to 7 centimeters proximal to the insertion. Painful unloading and local thickening of the tendon mid-portion. This may be absent with short symptom duration. At last, pain on palpation should be present. Insertional tendinopathies can be spotted with the same criteria, although the location of symptoms will be within two centimeters proximal of the insertion. Module three states that one can consider imaging if symptoms do not fit with all four criteria, when there's an unexpected course of symptoms or when surgery is being considered. Do not use imaging to determine the prognosis of Achilles tendinopathies. More explanation around different imaging modalities and the use of it can be found in the paper. Module four, let's start treating them. Consider using the Visa A questionnaire to evaluate your treatment progression or regression. Inform your patient that no or only limited improvements are expected in the short term. The form of exercise should be tailored to the individual and starting with a flat surface is recommended for insertional complaints. Additional treatment components can be considered if 12 weeks of the previous modality provided insufficient relief. The treatment components are education, information on prognosis, addressing psychological factors, and loading advice. Loading advice includes temporary cessation or replacement of pain-provoking activities, gradually increasing the activity, and the use of a pain scale to monitor activities and adjust accordingly. Adding to this, at least 12 weeks of calf strengthening is recommended. Consider surgery only after six months of active treatment without recovery. The authors provided a basic flowchart to guide rehabilitation, seen here. Now the final modules, number five and six, about prognosis and recurrence. The good news is that the majority of patients recover, but there's a chance that symptoms may persist in the long term, at least up to 10 years with 23 to 37% having persistent symptoms despite treatment. Make sure your patients know that you cannot provide a long-term prognosis for them specifically, since these factors are still unknown. Build up gradually, even after recovery, when the patients had a period of relative inactivity. Being hasty may result in problems. Consider advising exercise therapy for the calf even after recovery to your patient. That's it for this video. I hope you learned something today. I'm Max for PhysioTutors and I will see you in another video. Bye.